So, there's a lot when you're going to need to tie a knot, but there's not a knot that you want to tie a lot. So let's not get caught in a spot where if you don't know how to tie a knot, you need to tie a lot. So this week, we're going to be talking about some of the most important and common knots that you're going to find useful aboard your sailboat for when we need to connect two lines together and equally as important, getting those two back apart again quickly. Um, and these are the kind of life-saving knots that you're going to find useful in all kinds of situations that come up in the course of your sailing career. So stay tuned and let's crack on. Behold, the anchor hitch. This is a very useful knot on your sailboat. Whenever you need to affix a line to another standing point, so a D ring or an anchor ring or a horizontal position like this where you need to fix a vertical line, a hanging line or a guy line to a position like this, this is what this knot is for. So the benefit of the anchor knot is that it's also going to be a bit of a self tightening or like a slip knot. So wherever you affix it on your point, where you want your fixed point, it's going to grab a hold and stay put. It's not going to slide around very easily from that point. So let's get into how this works. You start with your bitter end. You're just going to flip that over where your anchor point wants to be. You're going to take it around for a second loop. So you now have these two loops. You're going to take your bitter end and cross it in front and back through your two loops. So you essentially have two loops and a half hitch. We're going to pull that tight. And you can see how those two loops cinch up nice and tight like that. You're going to now take this around, continuing clockwise around, and create a second half hitch. So as the tugboat folks out there will tell you, you have two turns and two half hitches. That ain't going anywhere. So another way you can finish this is to bring this around behind. So you have a half hitch, bring it around behind and complete another half hitch in the opposite rotation. This gives you what is known as a lark's head hitch. So you have two turns and a lark's head hitch. The only drawback, this is a nice symmetrical looking knot, right? So I do like to finish it off like this to give you a nice symmetrical looking anchor knot. But one of the drawbacks with the lark's head hitch is that sometimes this can work itself loose, right? So two turns and two half hitches is always a sure bet. Okay, so this next scenario involves what is known as a rolling hitch. So the rolling hitch will come in handy when you have this kind of a problem. This is known as a winch override. which is what happens if, if the line goes slack while it's um, going under load. Sometimes you'll get this situation where the line will wrap and the Genoa could be loading it and you can't get this pulled apart as long as there's a load on this line. So what we need to do is be able to free this line of its load. And I'm going to show you how we can do that with two winches. We're going to take a second line and we're going to apply a rolling hitch. Now the trick with the rolling hitch is that it needs to be two loops in the direction of pull because this line, this rolling hitch knot will slide in one direction and load up in the other direction. So we want to pull the load off of this line using this winch. So we're going to tie a rolling hitch to this. So we start by putting this bitter end over once, twice, very much like the anchor knot. We have it over twice. It's going to go around in front and continuing the same rotation over and back through. And then we're going to go ahead and tension this knot up. And this is the rolling hitch knot. So this knot, as I alluded to, it will slide this direction, but will load up in this direction and tighten up. And what we want to do is pull the load off of this. So we can run this line now back and around 
a second winch. Okay, so we've got the line now to our second winch and cleaned it off here. We can now start to tension the, uh, or take the tension off of this line with this second winch. And you see as soon as we have slack here, now we can free this override and clear that winch. Because this second line is now holding all that load on there. Okay, so we'll show you close up now how exactly we did this knot. So the rolling hitch knot, if I want to pull this way towards me, again, I'm going to put the loops towards me. So once over, twice over, around in front, continuing the same rotation over. So again, sort of like my last video, it's always on top, right? So on top, over, on top, twice around, on top over on top again and through. So it just maintains this same rotation around, around, over, around, right? And now when this loads up, it will grab and pull. And I can put significant force on this and it's only gonna continue to tighten that, that hitch, whereas it will slide the other way. So I can actually move it, slide it, adjust it, and tighten it on, and that's a great uh, not for securing like that winch override scenario I showed you, or um, I've used this as a uh, in a in a situation where um, I needed to get a bridle on an anchor chain. I could put this rolling hitch on the anchor chain itself, and there's a different variation on this where uh, you can put it on a chain, but this works as well um, to secure a, a bridle to an anchor chain or any situation. Um, where I need to grab a hold of another line and load it with something that I can slide, adjust it on, and then load it on and lock it on, right? So uh, the reverse of that, say I need to pull it the other way, so it's going to be the loops are on the direction, going towards the direction of pull. So one over, two over, around in front. Let me give myself some slack, right? So let's try that again. Once over twice over, around in front, continuing over, and back through. And now I can slide this way, but it's going to load up and grab going that way, the direction of the loops. Okay, this next one is the double sheet bend. So the double sheet bend is your go-to, or one of them anyway, for whenever you want to connect two lines together. So say you have a length that's running out to your tender, as like a painter to your tender, and you have another length that's not quite long enough, so you need to connect two lines so that you can extend your tender out further, or any of those kind of scenarios. You're gonna, uh, this is one of those knots that is very handy, um, in addition to just doing like a square knot, or a reef knot. So. We're going to start this by taking the uh, lines, and I like to do that, line them up like this so that I have um, them overlapping. And I'm going to start with the line outside of me, and I'm just going to put a loop in by that right hand twisting away from me to create that loop. And I want my loop to be on the inside. So the loop is facing in. And I'm going to do the same thing on this line. I'm going to put a, a loop on it with my right hand. I'm going to make this overlap like that. So they're mirror images of each other. Okay. So that loop is facing in towards the other line. This loop is facing in towards the other line. Okay. Just for future reference. The loop is on top. The loop is on top there. Okay. So I have this loop now. <coughs> And I'm going to come up through the bottom of the loop. So through the bottom and then underneath. All right? So I'm kind of coming through underneath, through the bottom, underneath, and back through 
that loop. Okay, and keep my fat hands out of the way. All right, coming through underneath, underneath, and back through. Now, that's your sheet bend. That's just a basic sheet bend. So I'm gonna pull that tight. Okay. Now, I like to just flip it around so I'm doing everything the same way. It's easier to remember that way. All right. I'm gonna put the loop in overhand again. A little bit, I'll give myself a little bit more slack. Overhand loop. And same thing again. I'm going to come up from underneath. I'm going to pass underneath again. And give myself a little bit more slack there underneath. And back through the top of the loop. Pull that tight. And then you get this shape the double sheet bend so you'll have the one loop facing down and in and the other fi loop facing up that's the look you get okay so it should look very symmetrical mirror images of each other these loops Now ideally when you do this, you want to try and do it with fairly equal size lines because when you have mismatched sizes, I'm doing this for illustration purposes, it makes it really easy to see what's going on with two different color lines like this. But if you have a small line and a big line, sometimes they can slip apart, but that will still work. It's going to, in fact, tighten on itself too. As you load these, uh, these loops, these sheet bends, it does actually make the knot tighter. And now I've got double the length of uh, line that I need. Just like that. Okay, this next knot is the twin bend. So similar purpose um, to the double sheet bend, but this is a slightly different knot. Um, this one's gonna start off curling around towards us. So you're gonna create a loop. This line's a little fussy. I'm gonna create the loop. So again, bringing it towards us. Loop over top, and then back through. So you have this kind of shape here. You have the loop here, and you have a loop here. The next part is gonna come through that loop, and back towards us again. It's come through, and back towards us and underneath. So again, it's the complete mirror of the uh, first loop, right? So instead of, the, uh, instead of it passing over top, it's gonna pass underneath here. Then this is gonna come up through and down through both of those loops. It's a little confusing, I know, okay? Let's do that again. It's going to wrap towards us and through itself. So you have a loop and a loop. This one's going to come through the bottom loop towards us and underneath. See, it goes underneath. Then you have these two loops here. Right. This is going to come over and through those two loops. So it's a mirror image of itself. You see? Now I'm going to pull that tight. And tight. Back and forth. And that is the twin bend.
Okay, so we're going to put a couple uh, lines together, a couple knots together now. And this is going to be a demonstration of the directional hanging figure eight. Okay, so we're going to start with our anchor hitch. Once over, twice over, in front, through, half hitch, two half hitches. So we've got our anchor, uh, anchor hitch now, securing to whatever we need above. And this is great. Uh, this is a great knot for just when you already have a hanging line and you need to put a loop in it quickly. We're going to bring the loop around on itself. So we have the standing end hanging from behind. Right? It's hanging from behind. And we can pull this loop up to whatever size loop we're going to need. Okay? Hanging like that. This is going to create the loop. It's going to come around behind, all the way around to 360, and we've created this loop here. It's going to come back through that loop. And that is your directional hanging eight knot. Okay, so it can load up in this direction, in the direction, vertical direction of the of the line. It won't do well pulling back. It'll pull the knot apart, which is great because again, like we said, we want to be able to get these undone later if they're if they're heavily loaded. So this is going to load in that direction and stay tight. And we can put a successive second knot in it. Again, standing lines hanging from behind. We're going to give ourselves the size of loop that we want. It's going to come all the way around behind one full 360 turn and back through this loop here. So this is a great example of, you know, a functional knot where we can make, for example, like a fishing stringer. Or if I have a halyard hanging from the uh, mast and the um, end is already attached to something and I need to put a loop in the span of the line, I can do that. Or I can take the bitter end around an anchor point and pass it back up through my loop like a trucker's hitch similar uh, concept and now I can use that to lash around a sail or lash around a dinghy on deck or that kind of thing all right so you can see how you could use that to lash around something and secure pull it tighter like a trucker's hitch that is your directional hanging figure eight. Okay, and now one more way to get a loop in a line like this where uh, where we may want to attach two lines together. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to wrap it around my hand like so, three times. Okay? One, two, three. You're going to grab the center this is the Alpine butterfly knot, by the way. I'm going to grab this center line, center loop, and I'm going to pull the center loop through until I get the loop size that I want. Okay? I'm going to take this back through behind and push it through the other two loops. Like that. And now I'm going to pull my hand out and pull this loop through here. And there you have it. You have the Alpine butterfly knot. Unlike the uh, directional figure eight knot, this one can load in either direction. You can pull that tight in either direction. So let's try that one more time. Okay. Taking the loop around. I'm going to try it in front of my hand this time. One, two, three. Okay. I'm going to grab this middle piece and give myself some uh, slack here to create a loop. Okay. I'm going to pull that through the third loop around the first and second loops and pull tight.
So same thing, just a little bit different, right? As long as you have three vertical loops like that. One more time, because I liked how that worked, all right? That creates loop one, right? Two, three, one, two, three. That's all you need. Make yourself the slack that you need here, all right? So I want to loop that large, roughly, all right? One, two, three. Middle one is going to come around the third one, back through the first one. And that is your alpine butterfly knot. As simple as that. Okay? That's what it looks like on the front. That's what it looks like on the back. And finally, one more way to connect two lines. This is the square knot or reef knot. And this is how I've always remembered it since I was a little kid. I'm going to take my left over right and create an X. It comes around and the one that was on top, so in this case it was the black line, it's on top again. So now it's right over left and back through. And that is the square knot. And again, these ones are good because they can pull apart. You can you can work them apart and they'll come loose even after they've loaded for, in some cases, years. I've been able to pull these apart. So, left over right. And around. Notice I always do it the same way, right? The black one's doing the, the black one's the one on top. And the black one's doing the loop around. And now it's right over left and it's gonna come around. I do it the same way every time. This is an excellent way to connect two lines if you're towing a painter or something and you wanna quickly get these two lines together and these knots really rarely slip apart, right? As quick as that. Real quick, right? So in a GIF, you can get two lines together right quick. That's the quickest way, unlike the uh, double sheet bend and the twin bend, which take a little bit of thinking and a little bit of doing. This one is straight off, off to the races, just like that. And there you have it. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Board Escape Velocity and Learn to Sail Mexico, and we hope to see you here again next week. Bye for now.